אנחנו מתארגנים, אני מזמין את מייקל דייל מקלטורה, שידבר איתנו על וידאו, ולמעשה על העתיד של ויקיפדיה מהבחינה הגרפית, איך היא תיראה בעתיד, איך בכלל האינטרנט ייראה בעוד עשר שנים ואולי אפילו קודם. אז הנה, מייקל מתארגן, בבקשה. אני אטפל בזה. Okay. Hello. I also do not speak Hebrew. Apologies. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, current and future possibilities for video on Wikipedia. I'm going to look a little bit at the... Let's first see who I am. I'm uh, Michael Dale. I work with a company called Kaltura. They're based here in uh, Israel. Uh, basically, they're an uh, open source online video platform uh, used across education. <laughs> Sorry, Ramat Gan. <laughs> the Ramat Gan area of uh, Israel. Um, and a uh, longtime supporter of video on Wikipedia. I, I worked on it uh, starting from, well, 2006-ish uh, till uh, recently. Um, so we're gonna, in this presentation, we'll take a look at sort of a video on Wikipedia retrospective, what, what we've done over the years and, and why or how <laughs> we've gotten to where we are today and looking at sort of what, uh, how, how the adoption has been. And then we're going to look at sort of new standards, new web standards for uh, rich media on, on uh, Wikipedia. That's sort of some of the new HTML5 APIs and looking how they could potentially help uh, bootstrap or sort of transcend the, the otherwise uh, the, the traditional inhibitors or, or things that have limited video adoption on, on the Wikipedia. Uh, basically looking for how to improve access to video as well as uh, ways to access it. And then also sort of looking forward to sort of what type of... Uh, collaborative video uh, possibilities exist because as people have always said, you know, uh, editing video is much more complex. It's not, it's not like text that's malleable by, by arbitrary users. It's something that requires, uh, you know, a much deeper investment in order to be able to uh, change it. And, and we're sort of looking at technologies that may uh, enable sort of casual contributions as well as sort of ways to use these, these audiovisual mediums. Uh oh. Somebody's air serving. Okay. Um, uh, basically use these uh, new web technologies to uh, interact with audio video in, in new ways, not necessarily just in uh, uploading a video article, but also uh, searching for video content to be put into the, in, into the encyclopedia, similar to how research papers are, are parsed today to find content for primary source articles of text content. So we'll take a quick look at the, the uh, history here. Um, around 2006 is when YouTube started to become, excuse me, started to become really popular, uh, sort of exploding on the web. Uh, around the same time, we, we started some initial efforts to, to bring uh, video to Wikipedia. I was actually a Summer of Code student for the Wikimedia Foundation in 2006. And we did our sort of initial implementation. Uh, we also sort of uh, worked with other open source groups like Mozilla and, and Foams to start uh, developing the, the video tag. Uh, and then around February 2007 was the first sort of initial 
uh, open standard approach towards video, and that was sort of a way that uh, <coughs> sort of opened the doors for for video on Wikipedia uh, based on Wikipedia's. I'm going to quit out of Air Server because somebody. Okay. Um, sort of opens the door for video on Wikipedia without sort of plug-in installs. You know, because of course Wikipedia couldn't use the YouTube approach and just uh, use Flash, which was much more uh, common and easier for uh, people to view content that way. Uh, we, were, we were aiming to take a standard approach in a way that was compatible with uh, free software browsers. So from 2008 to 2010, uh, HTML5 video went mainstream. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't bring along with it the royalty-free codecs. Uh, Nokia backed the H.264 codec, and eventually um, Google and Apple supported it. And, and of course, Apple and Microsoft were exclusively H.264, which really uh, led the way for it to become sort of a standard or a pseudo standard. Um, in December '07, we had the standards group removing the free codec requirement. This is uh, something that was obviously uh, detrimental to broad support for playing back content within Wikimedia video uh, because Wikimedia video was only an AUG. So if, if the standard no longer supported it, then the uh, site would no longer be accessible to browsers that implemented the standard. And then, of course, Steve Jobs made it a lot more, uh, broadened the video tag usage, but it wasn't the, uh, as, as much as Apple taught it, or as much as Apple was promoting the free formats, it was still sort of uh, free formats with this proprietary uh, codec. Um, and, and meanwhile, uh, the efforts of, for video on Wikipedia were also progressing. We started sort of a collaboration with Kaltura in, in 2008, or Kaltura started a collaboration with Wikipedia. Um, and then around September, we had sort of this, this video editor. There's, there's some nice links here if people choose to <laughs> follow up later. But just sort of some basic video editing within the HTML5 environment. Tried to, you know, sort of enable collaborative uh, sequencing of video content. Uh, and then in 2012, the sort of player itself became much more uh, robust for supporting subtitles and uh, multi multiple qualities of the video playback. Uh, also included sort of license attributions at the end of the content playback. <clears throat> uh, through through the course of time, there's been a few campaigns to get video on Wikipedia. So this, it, wasn't, it wasn't just that we had created this software uh, that enabled users to add video with, as well as sort of edit it. It was also a matter of uh, having active uh, campaigns to encourage video contributions. That was things like the Let's Get Video on Wikipedia campaign, the uh, Wiki Makes videos. Really, really nice projects to um, promote video contribution. I don't know if this. I don't know if we have. Well, let's see. Oh, that doesn't work. Wikipedia is the fifth most visited website in the world. There are over 29 million entries in 270 languages, but they're all missing one crucial thing: video. The Wiki Makes Video project wants you to help fill this gap. You don't need to be a professional to shoot great video. All you need is a camera, and even your phone will do, and some basic tips that can be found on the Wiki Makes Video homepage. We want you to capture the world around you, whether it's dance, sport, making things, or anything in your immediate surroundings. We want this to be the largest video gathering project in human history. So join us in making videos for Wikipedia so we can understand the world around us in an exciting visual way. Visit the Wiki Makes Video page on Wikipedia to learn more about our project and how to upload your own videos. Um, anyway, that, that was a nice, nice uh, project. But, and, and then, of course, uh, lots, of, lots of different wiki tutorials on how to uh, contribute video a whole breadth of knowledge and campaigns around video contributions but and and you know really amazing efforts but what happened it 
Today, only 1.1% of English Wikipedia articles contain video. It makes up less than 1.5% of the total files on Commons, and, and less than 0.2% of all the files. And I think, in aggregate, there's around 40,000 media assets. Uh, by, as a point of comparison, uh, YouTube, exclusively on educational CC license content, has over 6 million. So it, it really didn't pick up in, or, or hit that sort of uh, uh, scale that we anticipated. And, and the question was sort of what, why, and uh, what could we do to change that? The basically, uh, some folks think the royalty-free codecs were to blame. It's, it didn't really make it very easy to contribute. Uh, creating videos in royalty formats requires re-encoding, whereas normally all devices that you interact with, your phones, your cameras, uh, the hardware that you use to capture the world is in H.264 uh, normally. Once you create these files and upload them, you can't actually view them. That also discourages contributions uh, because most devices only implement H.264 playback. It's, it's starting to get a little bit better with uh, Google Chrome and, and Android but for the majority of users, you can't view the content very easily. <clears throat> and, and many of the visitors still use Internet Explorer and Safari, which also cannot consume the content without running uh, various workarounds. In February of this year, we, we had a large uh, request for comment from the community and presented a, a lot of different arguments about why uh, we thought it would be nice to uh, be interoperable with with uh, consumer cameras as well as sort of the the change in policy, which it was uh, from a moral standpoint of of uh, adopting codecs that were royalty bearing in some contexts, um, and the the RFC closed without the addition of H.264. So the the consensus was to not uh, add H.264 storm format support. And a lot of proposals and ideas were surfaced as various hacks and workarounds, but ultimately uh, they just sort of end up <laughs> interoperating with H.264 in different dimensions and ultimately don't uh, make it a first class citizen within the MediaWiki software. <clears throat> Meanwhile, on the broader web, HTML5 video has had a massive uptake. Uh, with the H.264 codec. Um, we have, we're shipping close to 1.4 billion HTML5 capable devices last year. So, so you can imagine the whole planet is now able to access video content in, in, through HTML5 standards, but with the restriction of the codec. Um, the lead with HTML5, uh, Kaltura, as a software company, we do a lot of video distribution naturally, and we've started to lead with HTML5. Google as well on YouTube now leads with HTML5, and it's become and video in a, as a whole has become larger and larger percentage of, of uh, traffic on the web. So you, those those are things like Netflix and OTT uh, plays. You see more and more content uh, being consumed through the internet is is in fact video content. Uh, and it, it reflects sort of a shift. You know, if, if you looked at the top 10 websites by visitors, of course, Wikipedia is way up there. But if you look at it in terms of uh, visual medium consumed, it's obviously much lower down there on the list. And, and whether that's important or not is also something to, to consider. But now we're going to look really quickly at sort of the, the new web standards and, and the possibilities they provide for. This is sort of the new HTML5 APIs. Um, these include things like WebRTC, which is sort of a uh, tool for real-time audio-video communication, uh, Media Source API, which is uh, a system for adaptive streaming, and uh, WebGL, which is giving more direct access to the hardware in the uh, device itself. And I'll, and I'll go over what these could potentially mean for uh, broadening video support within Wikipedia. So WebRTC, it, it basically uh, is an audio-video conferencing. I'm sure how many, how many people have heard of it before? We're in a, not so many, a few, few here and there. OK. So it basically adds support to the browser to let you do real-time communication. That's like 
uh, like a phone call or a Skype in your browser or um, uh, basically real-time data communication in between two peers. Uh, it, its support across platforms is not so consistent, but enables some really interesting possibilities. Um, here's just an overview of the APIs, but we won't go into the details. <clears throat> WebRTC for Wikimedia, what could that mean? You know, so that, that's sort of like self-hosted Google Hangouts. Today you see a lot of Wikimedia uh, community members sort of using Google Hangouts to do sort of impromptu meetings. This would sort of enable self-hosting and, and let you uh, use free software all the way through in, in sort of organizing your point-to-point -point conversations. Uh, it enables screen, screen share, so for instance, being able to share or do run a tutorial on article editing, you could you know share the screen at the same time, but all all driven through the Wikimedia uh, platform interface, uh, and then the peer-to-peer -peer data channel also potentially supports real-time collaborative editing and sort of uh, it's what you see with Google Docs, for instance, uh, maybe potentially enabling more folks to. Uh, form active collaboration sessions and really hash out their differences in real time as opposed to over long iterations or longer iterations or edit conflict iterations uh, as a news article or some real time event is uh, developing. Um, also, peer to peer video delivery has been explored. Uh, also, potentially. Uh, useful if, if Wikimedia starts distributing a lot of uh, video, then you'd want to have a way to do that. Uh, another, another sample project uh, is Video Wall, and what's interesting about this is that we're not just looking at WebRTC in the context of, uh, of authoring, but also in the context of viewing, and what, what can we uh, provide that enables users to not just uh, be better authors, but also better viewers or, or be in dialogue with somebody about the content that they're consuming, or uh, you know, have a visual explanation or iterative conversation around content that you're consuming. Sort of goes back to the old uh, textbook learning versus sort of active learning. If you have to sort of teach it to somebody else, or if you have to have a conversation with somebody about something, it, it becomes that much more uh, ingrained as knowledge that you can use. And this was a project that we worked on uh, with uh, the Internet Archive that basically searched for uh, trending news article, news content, and then as you uh, were watching uh, pieces of content, if you happened to be watching it at the same time as another user, you would, you would both have sort of a video chat open up uh, instantly within the browser to sort of uh, exchange your opinion about the subject matter that you were watching. Some other examples. Together.js is a a tool for uh, collaborative video, sorry, a tool for uh, collaborative uh, DOM sharing, which basically just means that multiple users can be interacting with the same interface. That's more along the lines of the Google Docs type approach for uh, wiki article editing. Uh, ShareFest, another way to sort of share files quickly among users. And then we'll take a quick look at the media source extension. This is uh, basically enables append bytes, which basically technical terms means that you're able to uh, append content uh, in sequence, and that just enables things like adaptive streaming, which just means the quality adjusts as you stream the content, and also is useful for uh, basically um, sort of an open source version of adaptive streaming, because as you consume video today on the web, uh, you're normally accessing it through one of these protocols that does adaptive delivery, those are also closed, and this is a way to open that up for sites like Wikimedia that only use open standards to deliver adaptive streaming. So smooth streaming for Wikimedia, as well as sort of true video sequencing. If we ever go back and revisit sort of the, the video editor functionality, this would, would make it actually possible, as opposed to when I was trying to implement it years ago, where the HTML5 with API was uh, very immature. Finally, uh, WebGL 
is another uh, interesting technology that's coming out. And what's interesting about this technology is it may provide sort of a mechanism to get around some of the limitations of the device makers not including the codec. So as you know, Wikipedia uses free codecs, and those codecs are not implemented on your iPhone, then you need a way to uh, let those users consume that audio video content. And WebGL has the potential to sort of uh, help you accelerate the video decoding in software. So this, is, this means sort of JavaScript based video decoding. And that lets you sort of get around uh, restrictions in the device. So you're no, you're no longer restricted to the hardware that was shipped with the device, but you can now sort of access these APIs and deliver uh, free video content to these devices. Unfortunately, Apple has not supported it. Uh, they only support the, it through the iAd tag, which basically means that uh, you can only deliver advertisements for it. Even though the functionality is present in the device, they have restricted it, so it's kind of frustrating, almost as annoying as this little monkey. Okay, so for Wikimedia, as I mentioned, it means the potential for software-based codecs. And we'll look at, we'll look at OGV in, in a second. Um, IE11 and Safari do support it. And then finally, sort of HTML5 everywhere is another sort of theme of this, of the second round of HTML5 video before we had like these major browsers. So back when I was working on this in 2007 or something, we were worried about whether Microsoft and uh, Apple Safari would support it. And, and nowadays we have like the proliferation of, you know, 100 different Android devices, which is a much broader problem. So now you have not just the principal platform of a few browsers to worry about, but all these different uh, hardware devices. That, that support varying versions of the specification to, to be concerned about. We'll go through this kind of quick. I mean, and again, web on TV, more people are consuming HTML5 video experiences through their television. It also has impact on uh, whether that, that content can be free content or not, if it's uh, restricted, if, if Wikimedia, as we saw earlier, still has that restriction of only free content, that limits the type of uh, context in which the free video can be distributed. <clears throat> so there's big challenges for video delivery with other devices, at least Chromecast. I don't know if anybody's played with a Chromecast yet, but that one does support WebM, so one small victory for, uh, for free formats there. And then, again, in the context of Wikimedia Zero, how does that map over to audiovisual elements? Presently, not very well. So here's, I'll, I'll speed up a little bit because I have about five minutes left. Um, Latest with HTML5 codecs. As we know, H.264 has become the standard, but there's potential for new free codecs being developed that will ideally uh, form the basis of broader uh, support for free format delivery. Um, and then we're, there's also the hope of software-based codecs, and that's what I was mentioning earlier about WebGL enabling uh, software-based delivery of, of codecs, which gets around sort of the, hardware's, the hardware not supporting it directly. And then we, there's a sample, uh, Brian's OGV.js. That's basically that, that uh, project that we're referring to. And we'll maybe take a look at that in a second. Other ways around these restrictions, there's potential partners like the Internet Archive that, that hosts lots of different videos, and that's a way to convert. There's the YouTube that also converts to WebM and has many Creative Commons licensed clips. Uh, there's tools for conversion. Firefog. What about sort of collaboration? What do we look, when we're looking to the future of uh, video on Wikipedia, what do we look to? I think Popcorn Maker has an interesting approach. It's sort of a uh, editor in, in the browser, which we'll see in a second if it loads up. Um, basically lets you sort of sequence different pieces of content. Oops. Show it quickly. Oh, it's adding, acting a little strange here, unfortunately. Wasn't doing that before. 
Uh, but we'll go back to the basic, you can see it here. Basically, it's, it's a series of uh, videos that you can sequence together. This would enable sort of collaboration in the sense that one person could uh, upload the source material, another person could add the voice commentary, another person could string those together and add some text overlays that described the content on screen. So sort of a collaboration of uh, video creation. Uh, you can see the, the media viewer efforts uh, within Wikimedia that recently launched. These, these sort of provide sort of a slideshow of images, also kind of makes the image content that's already there a lot more interactive. Uh, and then there's sort of tools for searching content uh, that make it a lot easier to reuse. So this, for instance, is the, the Internet Archive TV search, which they've archived something like I don't know, let's see, 500,000 or 500,000 shows since 2009 and really lets you search, basically search the entire history of uh, television since 2009 and pull up uh, a video clip from any, any uh, news event, which is a really powerful tool if you think about how, how the Wikipedia articles are going to sort of reference our audiovisual uh, history. And, and as these tools become more widely available, and support uh, free codex in, in the conversion of the assets, then it becomes more accessible to sort of pull in video content even without producing it yourself. And so there's lots of ways to get involved. Technology, there's lots of things to be developed. The popcorn, the, the broader uh, subtitle support was mentioned as well. Uh, lots, of, lots of different projects to make, enhance the video experience with Wikipedia and make for a brighter future. There's the, the OGV.js, which we didn't get a chance to show in detail, but essentially lets you deliver uh, video content to devices that don't inherently support uh, free formats. Uh, and then there's the, the sort of efforts to, for outreach, like we saw the, contribute, the contribution guide for Wikimakes video sort of gives you tutorials on how to use it. And I'll open it up to questions in one second. And then Kaltura open source video, we do a lot of stuff in other spaces as well as sort of provide a little bit of the technology for this. Okay, now we're ready for some questions. All right, uh, hello there. Um, you went very technical with the details about uh, all of the, about how to integrate video into Wikipedia. But uh, the actual question is, what are the main uses for video in uh, Wikipedia? Because basically, what are the advantages of video over images in Wikipedia, except for showing, for example, animal movement or uh, Things, uh, things in uh, physics, for example, but the, the real uses, w what are they? So I think there's, there's any number of uses. I mean, you have to think many people grow up with like audiovisual communication being the primary form of communication. They're not literate. There's lots of people that aren't uh, highly literate and think of every, everything that needs to be communicated to them is communicated audiovisually. So in that sense, it's, it's every article, uh, you know, you can imagine a documentary of, on every article. But in, in more practical sense, there's things like uh, historical events, you know, like the, the whatever it is, whether it's, you know, September 11th with that, that high impact visual imagery, you can't just, you can't possibly communicate that in the same way uh, with a still image or with, uh, with a textual description. Or there's, I mean, there's interviews with people that capture uh, persona and, and minor, details of their character that are also very difficult to describe purely in text. There's uh, lectures given where people are very, you know, passionate about subjects that they talk about, probably not my lectures, but uh, <laughs> other people that are very good speakers that, that present things in, in such a way that is high impact and you want to consume, consume it as video form. I mean, look, look no further than YouTube self-help videos on every possible subject or YouTube videos, uh, all the Kane Academy uh, efforts for sort of teaching uh, basic mathematics. Uh, there's you know a world a world of video out there being consumed and created, and uh, 
if, if the Wikimedia principles towards uh, freely reuse and uh, making that content freely available can be applied to that content, I think it'll have that much more value. So just imagine uh, YouTube, which isn't very hard because it already exists, but, but imagine sort of uh, beyond that and sort of without those people openly uh, remixing on that content or openly collaborating on that content uh, without sort of uh, the impediment of uh, uh, for-profit entity pro making money off of everything that you uh, try to share. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, if we have one more question or not, we'll go to the next speaker. Yes? No? Thank you.